So with that, I would like to introduce to you the uh, head of humanitarian policy and aid for the humanitarian group Aid, uh, sorry, Care. Uh, Gareth Prince-Jones. Gareth, thank you so much for Good joining morning. us. So, Gareth, with the meetings that you've had yesterday, do you feel that any real change or movement for change is in the air? Actually, we're pleasantly surprised. So, we came in, we'd set the bar quite high for this summit. It's cost a lot of money, it's taken a lot of time. Um, so, we'd set the bar quite high for success. But, uh, actually, we've been, we've been impressed. States, we've had some concrete commitments and, uh, yeah, we're, we're quite happy. Because people have been saying that it is going to be nothing more than a talking shop. It's difficult to grapple with how grim the situation is in places like Syria at the moment and the fact that two days of talking will do anything to help that. Absolutely, and you know, we, we're seeing unprecedented need both in Syria and also in the natural disasters like El Nino in Ethiopia. We're seeing huge, huge hunger. Um, but actually, this is, this is actually doing some good. We'd always known that the summit would, would come up with some useful progress. It's definitely fostered useful conversations um, and it's made connections that otherwise would have been missed. But one of the challenges for us is would it have made enough difference to justify the cost? And yesterday we saw some indications that it might. So the progress that you're talking talking about in these talks. Tell us more about that and how that will actually translate on the ground in these areas that desperately need it. So an example is the grand bargain discussion which was launched by Ban Ki-moon yesterday. And um, the challenge there, we've been quite dismissive. We thought it was tweaking with the aid system. It wasn't really addressing those underlying problems. Um, but what we saw yesterday was states such as Denmark highlighted that they changed their whole aid strategy based on that commitment. We saw states like Germany and Norway announce significant commitments in terms of new money. And that's a kind of, of uh, encouraging sign that states are taking this seriously. And you anticipate that there's more of that to come today? I'd hope so. It would be, we're not there yet, but uh, those are the kind of concrete commitments that will really change life on the ground for affected people. Speaking with some humanitarian groups, they say that the agenda of politicians and the difference with that um, contrast with humanitarian aid groups is very different. How are the two groups getting along in these meetings? So not bad. In fact, that's often an artificial distinction. We actually disagree with, for example, Médecins Sans Frontières on this, who say that you need to keep the humanitarian separate. Because absolutely, you know, the supply of humanitarian aid, us, the humanitarian system, it's really important that, that we improve and we get better. But actually, you can't address humanitarian aid. You look at the needs in Syria. Even if we quadrupled the capacity of the humanitarian system, it still wouldn't be enough. You've got to address that demand for humanitarian aid. And we're not working asking for world peace here. There are very simple steps that, take, steps that states can take to, to address that humanitarian need. Just following the basic laws of war would hugely reduce the impact of conflicts. So that's the kind of real commitment that we're looking for today. Gareth Prince-Jones from CARE, thank you so much for joining us.